there's an idea of independence that a lot of farmers have to be outside, to be self-sufficient and working on your own. And I know I feel that too. That's kind of one of the reasons that I'm a farmer. Like, but nobody can do all the things we need to do on our own. I'm Roger Phillips and this is Sub Edge Farm. Uh, we started the farm in 2013. We're in Avon in Farmington, Connecticut. We have 289 acres total. We're doing 20 acres of fruits, vegetables, culinary herbs, 20 acres of pasture. We heard about this program opening that would involve sharing of equipment between growers. And it was something that we were definitely interested in. I'm Amanda Fargo-Johnson, and I am the Connecticut RC&D Agriculture Programs Director. Connecticut RC&D, in partnership with USDA and NRCS, hosts the Soil Health Initiative in our state. And four to five years ago, we had really realized there was a need for organic farmers and non-conventional farmers to terminate cover crops. And so what came to mind was providing an equipment hub where area farmers could use pieces of equipment cooperatively. And so we were able to, through a conservation innovation grant, get funding to set up two hubs in our state. It's a three-year pilot project and it will wrap up the fall of 2020. My name is Jim Hyde. I'm a, an agronomist with the USDA, Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS. One of the things that we've been working on recently across the states is soil health. And soil health is largely trying to create or recreate a fully functional soil that can support plants, animals, and ultimately humans. So the benefits of going from a, a conventional system into a no-till system with uh, a soil health aspect of it uh, can be many, many different folds. Everything from reduced water consumption, increased water availability within the soil, uh, the nutrient cycling, so saving nutrients within the, the plant matter above ground and within the root matter below ground and allowing all those nutrients to cycle through the soil profile, largely within that root zone that we're shooting for. I'm Josh Bristol. We're on Bristol's farm in Canton, Connecticut. We are technically a conventional farm, but we try to follow organic uh, methods as much as we can. We've got about 15 acres. We grow diversified vegetables and a whole lot of sweet corn. I've been interested in no-till forever to cut down the time we spend on the tractor to see how it would work and to learn. You know, equipment's really expensive, so if you get a chance where you can get a piece of equipment on the farm and see what it will do and not have to purchase it and then find out you've purchased something that you really can't use and it isn't really what you need, it's, it's huge. So the value of doing this program was being able to supply farms with this equipment that can be costly for some of the smaller farms to purchase individually. So by us purchasing it for them, it gave them an opportunity to experiment with the equipment, learn from each other, try it out. My name's Andy Dapolonio. I own and operate Still River Farm here in Coventry, Connecticut. I um, do about 29 acres now. What I grow is wheat and rye for bread, and I grow flint corn, a yellow flint corn, and a heritage flint corn. Yeah, take your time setting it up. Meaning, for instance, it's the level of the machine, whether it's level or not, the, uh, the, the seed rates, you know, and the, the type of seed that you're gonna use, and in what kind of environment you're gonna plant it in, when it's gonna be bare ground or one that's covered with um, with organic matter like straw. So all of these things you have to take into account and then uh, you know you got it right and <laughs> look at it a couple of weeks later and it's coming up. I'm Tom Wells, uh, owner of Hillside Farm in Mansfield Center, Connecticut. I have a small dairy farm that I uh, started around in 1980. I have about 150 acres of hay and 50 to 60 acres of corn. I like to use that seed drill because it's heavy enough that it gets the seed down at the proper depth. This, uh, this no-till seeder is, I was, it's the first thing I ever saw that I was impressed with, no-till. When I looked at it and seeing it work, it is top-notch. They're really nice pieces of equipment. Dealing with sub-edge and going and getting equipment, Roger has been just accommodating and has helped. Whoever was there always just let us right in. The hardest part of it 
was getting the equipment from there to here. Once you got it on the farm, it was a breeze, really. It was the, just so almost self-explanatory. I missed the first meeting and I just towed it back and used it. I read the manual and went to town. And so I've been getting the grain drilled three times a year. We, in the years we used it, the first year we didn't put enough down and then we increased our seed. As far as the roller crimper goes, our first time using it, um, I find that we probably didn't seed the rye heavy enough. And because of that, when we, crimp, we crimped it, there were some annual grasses growing up with, with the rye grass and they kind of took over. And so we we had to uh, turn it under because it was um, just too heavy of, of weed pressure. This program started three growing seasons ago. We have mostly organic farmers, farmer pledge farmers in the western part of the state and in the eastern part of the state we have a diversity of farmers. We have dairy farmers, we have a greenhouse grower, grain grower. So it's worked out very well. We have a roller crimper and a seed drill in each of the hubs. Because the equipment is used seasonally, we do have to kind of limit how many farms can use it within each hub. I do think that the equipment sharing is a great idea and I think there could be more of that with more specialized pieces of equipment. I think we're definitely going to continue next year and maybe the difference would be in what crops we're going to plant. My family's been farming this plot of land for getting close to 150 years now. You know, the, the health of the soil makes a huge difference as far as getting the crops established without just doing it all chemically. You know, it's important to me to be a steward of the land and to, to pass this land off as good as I found it.